Today we are going to be working on our mole conversions target lab. So I went ahead and I got some of the equipment out so that we're ready to go here. We can see that I've got my magnesium metal. We have our 250 milliliter beaker. This is what we call a watch glass. And this is my evaporating dish. We've got up high, we have our graduated cylinder with our hydrochloric acid. I've already uh, pre-measured the acid into it. Um, we are gonna go ahead and start in on the lab now. So let's take a quick look at the procedure. And step number one, we are going to record the number on our evaporating dish. This is not necessary for us since the um, there's, there's only me doing it. Normally there's a whole bunch of different groups in class and that's an issue. The next thing though we do need to do, <clears throat> we need to weigh the evaporating dish and the watch glass together and record the mass. So let's move over to the digital scale. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and record that. Next step, we're gonna tear a 250 ml beaker. So I've got my 250 ml beaker. And I'm gonna put that on the scale. And remember that when we tear something, we're basically just zeroing it. Um, oops, there we go, wrong button. So there we go, so we've got the zero on there. And how much of this do we need to add? Looks like 0.5 grams. So it doesn't need to be exactly 0.5. We just need to get it in the ballpark. Um, so let's go ahead and start putting some of the magnesium. So normally magnesium is a metal, but if we look at it, um, this is, uh, it's, it's basically crushed up here. So we're aiming for somewhere around 0.5. Maybe a little bit more. That looks pretty good to me. We've got 0.47. Let's see what we've got next. I'm going to take this off and we are going to get the hydrochloric acid rocking in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put the hydrochloric acid in. And when we see the hydrochloric acid, acid plus a metal is usually not gonna get along very well. We can see that the acid is attacking the metal and it's generating a lot of gas as that happens. This is hydrogen gas that's coming off of here. And it's also a lot of water vapor. You can see that it's getting really foggy up here along the top because this generates a lot of heat. So if like I touch this right now, it's, it's actually pretty warm. If you handle it up near the top, you're okay, but we're just gonna keep on swirling and letting this reaction do its thing here for a minute. Still got, you can see there's still those individual sort of white specks where the acid's attacking the metal. We want all that metal to be gone. Getting there. Gotta be patient. Still tiny little bits in there. We're just waiting for those last bits. All right, we're looking pretty good now. 
So now what we're going to want to do is we are going to basically heat this thing up. We're going to put it over some heat and um, we're going to drive off the water. And we're going to drive off all this liquid and it's going to expose the product that was produced. And that product is magnesium that is combining with the Cl. So you saw that there's already some liquid in here. This is water. You dissolve this in water. And so that's a lot of what the carrier is here. We saw all that steam and heard, saw that fizzing. That was the H2 turning into gas and leaving. So the Cl was left behind and the Cl was going to attach itself to that magnesium. And so dissolved in here right now is that Mg and that Cl. And we're gonna get the water out by boiling it. We have a name for that when we boil the water out of something and we leave behind the other material. Um, and so we call that, it's like distillation, right? We're separating based off of the boiling of water. So now we're gonna move over because there could be a little bit of extra hydrochloric acid in here. And as I boil it, I don't wanna breathe that. So we're gonna move over to the fume hood. All right, so we've now come over to the fume hood and we need to dry this out. So we're gonna do it using a Bunsen burner. Um, and so what we're gonna do now basically is we're just gonna go ahead and heat it up. So we have our ring stand here. We've got the wire gauze and we're gonna pour our solution into this. The idea is we don't wanna boil the beaker up on top of here because once the liquid is gone, the glass can get pretty brittle and they tend to crack and break. That's not true of the ceramics. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, now that it's all dissolved, we're gonna go ahead and pour it off. So we're trying to get that last little drop out of there. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it up on top here. And we're gonna get this thing heating up. Now, the trick is not to get it to splash. We know that when things start to boil, they'll oftentimes splatter and splash and you'll lose product, which will mess up our values a little bit. So we don't want that to happen. We also have to be careful because like I said, there's a little bit of hydrochloric acid excess that's in that beaker and you don't wanna be breathing it. So it's gonna get noisy in here uh, when I turn this on. Um, we're gonna kind of step back a little bit and you guys will see what I'm talking about. This is a fume hood, so as we step back, you can see it's kind of like a cabinet and then the cabinet has a vent that goes up. So it's like a giant vacuum cleaner basically and it will start drawing in air in this direction here. So you lower the sash a little bit and then basically the air will come in. It'll take any of the bad vapors and it'll go up uh, onto the roof where we're not having to breathe it. So let's go ahead and get the Bunsen burner lit and start heating this thing up. So at this point, we're gonna start generating a little bit of the, the vapors as it heats up. Right now it's not doing it, so we're gonna flick the fume hood on, and at this point it's gonna get a little bit noisy. And so I'll probably stop talking and you'll wanna turn down your volume uh, as this just boils. We're gonna to have to kill a little bit of time here with the boiling. Checking back in here for a second. And we can see, maybe if we turn out the light, we've got a nice gentle oil going. No splatter, which is good. We want to keep it from splattering all over the place.
Okay, so if we take a quick look here, we can see that there is no liquid left. And we have this thing super hot. Um, there is a little bit of stuff. It's kind of hard to see. It's actually on the lid itself, so we were able to stop some splatter by putting the watch glass on. But we have that magnesium chlorine combination hanging out inside of there. It's got like a whitish yellowy color to it. All the extra HCl, all the extra water is gone. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and shut this off. We're going to need to give it a few minutes to cool before we go putting that on the scale. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and that's where uh, these little guys come in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick it up. I'm going to set it down on the um, ring stand itself. That piece of metal at the base will act as a good hot pot holder for us. And then um, in a few minutes, four or five minutes, we'll go ahead and weigh it when I can touch it and see what it looks like. So we're gonna set it down here and let her go. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and give this thing away. It's still a bit hot actually. So, I mean, it's not gonna break my scale, but I don't wanna carry it in my hands. So we're just gonna carefully walk it over to the scale. Normally we wouldn't do this in class. Too crowded, too many people, but we're getting adventurous. Hopefully I don't drop it on camera. Uh, but we're over here at the scale now. We're gonna go ahead and set her down. Oh, we need to zero this first. Okay, so we've got, uh, oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to smack that. So we're gonna go ahead and get our mass of the dish, the watch glass, and the combination of MG and CL. And now you guys should have all the info you need to um, finish answering those questions. So it's gonna fluctuate a little bit. If that's bugging you, just you know, pick your number that's hanging out on the longest because of the heat it is still kind of warm. And sometimes those heat waves will change the pressure of the air directly over the thing. So as it continues to cool, it'll probably get a little bit heavier over time, but we're seeing a very small change, right? 0.01 isn't much. All right, let me know if you guys have questions.